Thanks for tuning in to Loser Kid Football Podcast. We are on episode 131. I am Josh Roop. With me, my co-captain, as always. Scott Larson. And Scott, it's been... It, it, news is like up and down right now, mm-hmm. but... You know, there's plenty of games. If you want to buy some, you know, spooky released Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Looney Tunes, Stern just did Jaws. There's other games that are being rumored to come out. So if you want to get on those lists or you're looking for those new games, who are you hitting up? I'm going to call Zach and Nicole Mini a flipping out pinball. They have always been good to work with. Uh, the easiest thing really is to message them. Um, yeah. There's a phone number too. Uh, they're always quite receptive. If you're looking for that new game, great. If you're looking for a way of upgrading your game, if you want a shaker motor, if you want uh, art blades, you know, all those type of things. And I've gotten all my toppers and you know how I always buy the toppers. I've got them all through them too. If you have an older game that you're looking for, so they can, they can fit any budget. So just reach out to them. They've always been friendly uh, to work with. I agree. And you know, when I buy into a company, I don't mind paying a little extra if, if I'm getting great customer service and I feel like Zach and Nicole still give you a great price and great customer service. I think it's a great price and great service, which is, so you're not sacrificing, you're actually not sacrificing service by going with their really competitive prices. Yes. So (laughs) R2D choose joining us tonight, huh? Yeah. (laughs) My father-in-law, father-in-law texting. Well, you and I were kind of out of like internet reception for the past like, week. Yeah. Plus. Yeah, we so, were both in the Caribbean, but we were in parallel zones. You went, you went Eastern Caribbean. I went Western Caribbean. So, uh, why don't you fill us in on your uh, quick cruise update? Oh, it was it was great. Uh, if you're looking for a cheap cruise, Carnival's where it's at, and uh, you know I don't drink and gambling's not really my thing, so it's kind of it's kind of <laughs> weird to be on a boat. It's like. Okay, okay but did you okay, did you try the escargot? <laughs> yes, actually, they had frog legs. They did not Ooh. have escargot, but they had frog legs. And okay. They were delicious. They yeah. were a garlic butter. It's, mm-hmm. It was like I, a chicken wing. It, I think I butter like, and garlic are definitely part of it. Yeah. 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 So I mean, that's what made it. So, so delicious. Y- you went Eastern. I went Western. I actually, so I took the opposite end. I ended up on a Disney cruise, uh, but we were taking our uh, in-laws and we needed something that was very... Very family friendly, very low key, and it was a great experience. And I uh, got my son to try escargot. So that, that, that's one thing that's fun about cruises is you can try all the foods with no like uh, no penalty, really. My, my and only complaint escargot about is actually food. pretty good. It's yeah. it is. My only complaint, but about it's but it's butter and garlic, just like you said. Yeah. I don't know about your cruise, but on our cruise, there's a lot of older people, and so they don't season the food. Like I like a really good se- you know pepper and salt. Okay. And, and spices and it's like you can definitely tell they're catering to someone that's going to complain if there's oh their, their cholesterol's rose or their sodium intake cigar. <laughs> yeah the low sodium diet now yeah. our ours was uh, we had a lot of uh, I, obviously it's a lot of families so a, a lot of people with kids my age and and they just went to the kids club so that that was a lot of fun and so, yeah so we, we were out out of circulate we actually recorded right before we left and then we just got back and i've been I've been running like a madman because when I take a vacation, I end up getting stacked with uh, with call shift. So I have a call shift tomorrow. So I'm going to be working late. Yeah, I keep looking at my phone. I'm like, I know he's back in the states, but he's not responding. I yeah, it must Ooh. be work. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> uh, yeah. I've been pretty busy. Oh my goodness! I speaking of which, so we did record the Twippy episode, and I, I want to put some emphasis on this. This was a loser kid episode where we were just sharing the Twippy results. And when Will reached out to us, he would, he reached out to us like a week before mm-hmm. voting shut down in January. And he just said, I just want you to read the, the, the results on the episode. And I was like, okay. And as I sat there and thought about it, I'm like, I don't know. Like, that's just, it's really weird looking at past episodes uh, of the Twippies, whether it was during COVID right. and they had recorded or the live shows. And so I was like, I feel really awkward just like pulling up the sheet of paper and be like, okay, this is who mm-hmm. went topper. So that's when I was like, okay, I'm going to reach out to people I know. I'm going to reach out to the winners and just say, hey, we're just going to throw something together and and we're going to release it as an episode. And it's kind of funny because like a lot of it was kind of play by ear. I never really planned most of this out because I know like Dennis, like shout out to Dennis and, and Zach on the pinball show and thanks for the kind words. Um, but Dennis was like, well, if we knew in advance, we would have promoted it. And I was like, yeah, but the problem is I made the executive decision to release two weeks ago right? because 
really the prime slot, honestly, I felt like would have been last week to release. But I don't want to overshadow the Degenies and everything Joe Chiaravano had done. And then my biggest, com- one of my biggest complaints about the Twitbees is like, you do all the voting and everything in December, and then the results are done by January. Yeah. You don't get to see anything till March. And I, I kind of wanted to get it pushed out and be like, hey, this is the results. So I wanted it done sooner rather than later. And if I, I waited till we got back, it was end of February before this thing would even be showing. Right. You, you want to still strike while the iron's hot. And I, yeah. I will give full credit. Josh actually put mo- put it together. He's the one who reached out. He's the one who gathered it. And we all are aware that this was a challenging year for multiple reasons. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a format change. We were able to, uh, I am still very proud of what we did because we were able to get the the winners on and hopefully you guys enjoyed the show. I, I appreciate that we were able to at least, be, uh, at least work under challenging circumstances and we'll see how, how the show evolves in the future. And I appreciate everybody who contributed everybody who submitted and especially Josh for doing all the heavy lifting to coordinate and to edit everything. Well, thank you. And it was, it was really fun to do. Um, the other interesting part, I haven't done a lot of this. Like we just started doing video podcasting this last mm-hmm. year, right? Like this is our first year. Um, I've never really, the most I'd ever done was like video editing programs back in high school and high school was sadly 18 years ago. So it's been a minute <laughs> and like I'm not very used to YouTube, and so like the premiere thing kind of made me nervous. But I wanted to do that. Was the nice part about like the Twippies, even when it was a video, like you could have a chat going and discussing stuff in chat. And the nice part is I'd ask some people uh, to help kind of regulate chat as well. And I want to thank those people that helped with that end because the problem was is you and I were traveling at that time. We we were, and so we couldn't do it. Yeah. yeah. And so, like I said, it was more of an executive decision that I was just like, you know what. I want this kind of just out there and, and we can go from there. And honestly, it, it was very well received in my opinion. Yeah. I, it was better received than I thought it would just because of everything that happened with the Twippies this year. So overall I was happy with the result. So. Yeah, it was great. Congrats to the winners. Uh, solid year of pinball and looking forward to what this next year comes with. Yep. What? 60, 66% of the awards went to Stern and then, Congratulations to it's it's amazing that Labyrinth, you know, took a couple of awards home being a brand new company. It shows that if you have the right concept and if you if you have the right execution, people right. will buy into that, right? Absolutely. So, which makes me wonder. So, Scott, we've I, I kind of pitched this idea to you before we started the episode, but is pinball falling apart or, or, or people just kind of nitpicking and wanting parts of it to fail? What do you think? I think pinball is changing. And when we were during the pandemic, we were looking for any sort of outlet. So having something that we can have in our home, really at home purchases of pinball machines really skyrocketed. Yes. So being able to uh, have something that we typically have uh, been entertained in a group situation that people were able to bring home. It was a it, it was a lifeline to many people. It, it certainly was a challenging time for everybody, regardless of what you felt and regardless of which state you lived in or everybody was affected somehow. Yeah. In many ways, we were able to look at all the positives of what pinball was able to bring us in isolation. So in fairness, I would argue that we were probably overestimating the successes and the positives of pinball and maybe looking past some of the challenging aspects of it. Yeah. With now, as we all kind of revert back to our normal thing, we are, we're pretty much should be pretty much back to a similar um, mode of life. I no, no one's wearing masks. No one's staying home. No, everyone, every kid's going to school. So we're able to look at it with maybe a more critical eye. Now, is it possible that people are accentuating now and looking more for the flaws? Yeah. Yeah, probably. Um, It's we're not as starved for pinball attention as we may have been when we were in isolation. Yeah. So unfortunately, a lot of times this is what happens in any 
hobby and any sport that eventually we start looking for things that we don't feel are where we want to be with a more critical eye. Yeah. And I'd like to say that we've been fairly, I want to say we're balanced with a lean towards an optimistic view of what the hobby is. I feel like we're, we will point out like the cons and the pros, right? Like, and so, but I feel like there's a lot of negativity in the hobby right now. Like, let's take example. Um, you know, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of slack around the uh, American pinball, yeah. you know, the way that was released, that was uh, via kill on the elect- eclectic gamers, not eclectic, sorry, electric bat arcade podcast. Mm-hmm. And it was actually was done, sorry, via pinball party. Kale owns also electric bat and he has an art, he has podcast for that. If you haven't checked any of those out, check them all out. Mm-hmm. But just the way it was presented and whatnot. And it kind of like was fanned by the fire. And then like American never like they kind of shut it down. But yeah, anywho, but it seems like so like people were freaking out about American and then like all that stuff that happened with 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 multimorphic just a couple months ago about the 3D printing and whatnot. And then, you, you know, it just and haggis has been kind of under fire lately. And, and then they released a letter which like congrats them for being like transparent and whatnot. But like them saying that like they're slowing down production to refocus and recapitalize and it just seems like there's a lot of like people are pushing this narrative like just pinball is really terrible right now like even <laughs> shark no eat ball right with stern pinball like right. no one's no one's uh immune to what's going on and maybe maybe it's just people being critical of something and are, are being justified in being critical i don't know but i'm just like there's a lot of uh pep- pessimism right now in the hobby um let, let's, let's talk about some of these topics i brought up there what, what do you think of the american pinball stuff like the challenge with any business is you need to look at revenue so to make a business profitable you have to bring in revenue whether that's through services or whether that's through sales So it is reasonable to look at a company and think you have a company here and if your revenue stream is selling pinball machines, it's not too difficult to say there will be challenging days ahead if you are not selling a certain number of machines. Yeah. You can also look at and this is just the the finger in the wind test to find out where the wind's blowing you need to ask we're we're involved with a lot of enthusiasts in pinball who buy machines yeah how many of our friends and our the immediate buzz is around purchasing a new american pinball game and it's not as much as it would be for competitors so from a business standpoint if you're thinking is it a is it an at risk company absolutely just by the word of mouth because yeah. if it were a solid company right now you would see a lot of machines going out a lot of machines on location and a lot of distributors pushing their machines yeah since i don't see that my just my business eye says that they may be going through hard times yeah. i'm not sure if that means now people have started extrapolating on that People have started saying, well, I'm telegraphing, I'm saying, uh, I'm connecting this dot with that dot. And therefore it means you know, the company's up for sale. The company's going bankrupt, the, the company, just whatever. But those are all speculations to be frank. Yeah. Um, the, but the, the fact that we have all seen with our eyes is they're not selling as many machines as they probably should to have a healthy, viable current operation. Well, it doesn't even help either that like fix came on our show and then the numbers because we asked how many games are you producing and i only think i was so confused by the time he was I, like I, I i'm not sure and i couldn't even understand uh, which number he was really dialing in on he was talking yeah. about having numbers per day that you yeah. could do but if I mean, it, you're like okay so did you sell two thousand because uh, uh and an average year has roughly 200 working days in it. Yeah. Maybe 300 if you want to add like, you know, some, uh, some other stuff. So that would be like, okay, so if you're making a few machine, even a few machines a day, does that mean you're selling 
two thousand, three thousand games, and, and we we just know that they're not selling that many as the, what they could do. Yeah, well, I, I, I I wish them well. I hope yeah. they 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 do provide an alternative option for many people who are not interested in the standard releases that Stern is putting out, or even JJP, or even the American Pinball remakes. It's a viable alternative. I don't feel they are manufacturing to what they need to. Yeah. You mean Chicago gaming remakes? You said American pinball remakes. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> Chicago <Yeah>. pinball remakes. <laughs> but it does bring up a good point. And here's the thing about American. I think, yeah, like it stinks that they're not making licensed games per se. And the next one, which is rumored to be at Texas pinball festival, which is Barry Osler's final game, which, mm -hmm. uh, which was given the nickname food truck. I don't know if that's the official name that we're going to see, but like that has been one of the major complaints, but the nice part, like the positives of American, I feel like they're producing games at a good rate. I feel like the quality of the build is good. Yeah. Like you can cite like Galactic tank force, those targets right below the tank when they first were being produced were not great. Like they, they were getting damaged really easily, especially where you're hitting them repeatedly. But they 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 crack down. They fix that problem and they send it out. And I haven't heard any more issues about that. No. So I just I feel like Americans really good at producing games and, and fixing when there's something wrong. And so I feel like Americans should get a little bit of a benefit of the doubt. It is a little bit nervous when you hear that that investors coming in or they're they're shopping out American. Their their parent company Aimtron could be shopping them out which could doesn't be sound like that's that's, that's a that's a rumor right yeah uh, if rumor. you haven't listened to jeff teola's pinball profile where he had david fix on it sounded like they they did talk to an investor but it was not on the same level like being shopped out i didn't i don't know you I, go go listen to your go listen to jeff yeah, yeah go listen yourself. to jeff's interview and, and i, I want to actually put a quick plug in for for jeff teola's that man is got to be the most un un uh, not unrelated <laughs> underestimated uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for, Scott? Jeff is underappreciated for Under everything, he, everything he does in pinball. Yeah. He actually does work. He's very connected behind the scenes. He, yeah. he knows a lot about uh, what's going on and having David on and interviewing him and giving him a forum. So David could actually say in his own words, what's yeah. going on behind the scenes is a huge benefit. So I do appreciate everything Jeff does because it, it is understated compared to other, uh, other media options. Yeah. I know that like very nice things have been said about us lately and, and I appreciate that, but I'm like, there's other people behind the scenes. That I feel like right. deserve some recognition. I know Jeff isn't the kind of guy who like recognize me. Like he, he's probably the last person to ever say that. Like, but I feel like Jeff does deserve some recognition for what he does for the hobby. Right between prim pinball profile between commentating and tournaments even just the goofiness of final round i mean mm -hmm. the reach arounds has to be one of my favorite award shows that have ever been done for pinball so it, it is what it is but anywho the point being go check out pinball profile if you've never checked them out i know there's a lot of new people in the hobby we appreciate you tuning in and uh go listen to pinball profile on david fix also another plug for the new people in the hobby because i got this comment a couple times which is kind of weird People don't know we have a YouTube, Scott. And apparently oh, yeah. don't bring it up enough. We're so on the you YouTubes. Been, yeah. yeah. And if you haven't done this yet, run to our YouTube and subscribe. Check us out. We are doing this as a video podcast as well. Just and in so, case anyway. you haven't checked us out, we're gorgeous. We're gorgeous. We are attractive men. Yes. If you think attractive. our voices are sexy, you should just see Scott in that loser kid hat you're wearing. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Let's go on to from a purely fans standpoint okay. what is your wish for american pinball for the next year for the next year release food truck people love it uh it it's a game that people enjoy and want to have in their house and they're able to move forward uh raising numbers of production and look to the future of finally getting those licensed themes in um i mean it would be insane to have some of the uh i'm trying to think there were some some licenses maybe we can't discuss them never mind i'm not going to say anything actually okay okay well <laughs> uh, okay i will actually say my wish for american pinball okay. my my wish for american pinball stop releasing unlicensed things yes this is we're 30 years past that what really kept stern afloat during the dark years 
right after Pinball 2000 imploded, and they were the last uh, the last pinball manufacturer standard, standing, was when they re- when they were leaning heavily into licenses. Yeah. So they released Lord of the Rings. They released The Simpsons. Even wow, uh, these are like D list things. But even releasing Monopoly yeah. and Wheel of Fortune. Okay, Big these are not game. these are not great themes, yeah. but they are identifiable themes. Yeah. And the bottom line is if you need to budget 300 to $500 to buy some sort of market space with an identifiable brand, you need to do that. So that that's my first wish. Second wish, you need to make more games. Yeah. And the bottom line is you need to find something that is going to be a, that will connect with people. And this is the, now they released Hot Wheels. Yes. Hot Wheels was not a great pinball theme for me because you're yes. Although it's a well-recognized brand. I don't think that the Venn diagram of pinball enthusiasts and Hot Wheels enthusiasts overlap that much. Yeah, probably not. So you need to find something that's relevant to pinball. I'm not saying you need to do a dad rock game because we all know Stern and JJP are releasing the dad rock things, but there's a reason why they're releasing the dad rock things Yeah, because they are selling. So yeah. find something that find a theme that's relevant to pinball and lean heavily into that. We know that JJP sold a ton of guns and roses. Oh yeah. Games. Was, now, Jack Renary said on our episode, it was the best selling game they've had so far. Right. Do, do you think it would have sold as much if it were glam rock? No, of course not. I mean, you, you have that thing. Now I'm not saying you need to have a guns and roses theme, but find something that's going to connect. I don't know. Try an eighties classic cartoon, GI Joe, he, I, I, I don't know something like that. Cause it, it's in that era of the demographic of people who are willing to spend money on games. Yeah. You know, yeah. And my understanding is they are looking in that direction. I think the problem is, is the timeline, it, it feels like it's forever, right? I know Galactic Tank Force just released last Texas Pinball Festival. Yeah. But it, it's almost, I, I don't know. With the designers they have on board and whatnot, they can start cranking these out more. I hope the timeline es- uh, it escalates or, you know. Right. They, they, they need sh- to do shorter runs. Yeah. They need to do shorter runs, like focus on kind of what how spooky got off the ground focus on a limited run of something that way you can really keep your focus as a manufacturer to say hey we're going to make 500 of these things boom out the door we're going to make five and and if you start out uh, you know outpacing what your demand is then that's when you start looking for okay we're going to do a premium version we're going to do an limited there's a reason why stern has their model the way they have it and Jer- and Jersey Jack basically has copied that model. Well, and the other so, thing too is I, I think American does understand like they need licenses. Sure. Like they've heard this for a while now. Yeah. And I think Barry's next game is a tribute to him, right? Like they sure. they want to do it for him. And then we've heard the next one. It, technically, it is a license, right? Like if it is Whitewater, they're going to have to hit a planetary pinball. They're going to have to get the license. Sure. Just like Stern had to for Black Knight. Like Black Knight wasn't just something they got to make up. Sure. It's they had to go. And, but that's and also. That's a very niche, like the Venn diagram for people who are fans of whitewater and fans of pinball. It's a circle within a circle because yeah. first you have pinball enthusiasts and then inside pinball enthusiasts, you have a fan base for black Knight. So that's one of the reasons why it was challenging for black Knight to sell because even though it was a well-respected theme, It didn't branch out. It didn't connect other people. We know that uh, Led Zeppelin is a, I'm just going to say a decent game. It's not a terrible game. It's not a great game. It's a decent game. But you're going to get people who are Led Zeppelin fans who are buying this game. And that's what makes me laugh too is like, so let's talk about that just for a split second. So Led Zeppelin, I'm not a fan of it, right? Like you've, you owned it. Yeah. Uh, Still do. It's, it's in my game. garage, but still, still doing it. 
But what has shocked me is I have talked to people behind the scenes that say Led Zeppelin, Led Zeppelin still sell them like hotcakes. Yeah, it and sells it's because, because it's theme. a great theme. Yep. And that's that's what boggles my mind is because, in my opinion, Led Zeppelin doesn't even crock, crack the top 10 of, of Steve Ritchie. It probably doesn't crack his top 15. Um, it just... And the, but the other funny part too is the like theme is very integral, right? Like mm -hmm. we were told recently too that Black Knight is not the worst selling Spike Two game for Stern, and so it is what it is. So yeah. I th I think it just depends. I think Whitewater's a good, it's a good theme if you're going to be doing original theming. Right. Uh, I think American Pinball picked right. If if it is Whitewater, uh, Whitewater's still good for them though. Yes. So Black Knight I may have. You may not have been great for Stern because they were looking for higher sales numbers. Correct. But yep. Whitewater would be a great theme for American Pinball because you can be successful on a lower run. Correct. I think it still sells more than Houdini, which is their best selling game. So no, yeah, probably. All right, moving on. Speaking of Jeff Teolis and getting David fix on, he this week got on Jerry Stellenberg, mm -hmm. uh, Josh Kugler and Colin McAlpine to talk about their newest release the uh, the princess bride what do you think of p3 ob obtaining this license and making this into i in my personal opinion this game looks amazing yeah uh have you seen this yet scott what, what are your thoughts mm -hmm. on it yeah it's it, it's great having that theme it the princess bride there are fair few movies that i would rank as perfect movies from start to finish yes I mean, Princess Bright, it's a perfect movie. Yes, it is. So having that theme, it connects across multiple generations. It's an accessible layout. Yep. And it integrates well within their system. It, it will sell the most P3 games compared to any other release they have, including Weird Al. Yeah. Because... You, we getting back to the Venn diagram. The Venn diagram for Princess Bride is huge. It really is. Yeah, I'm surprised it, it, no it, one's it, done this before. It dwarfs the pinball circle. I mean, the the circle for Princess Bride is huge. Yeah. So it will sell games. Uh, it's there are now. If I'm gonna if I'm gonna nitpick with systems, this is the challenge with having the P3 though, is because there are questions about with other pinball companies, they have like a, okay, this is a system 11 game, or this is a spike game, or this is, you know, it's a, a, um, a white star game. You know, you have these definite operating systems, which roughly correlate to, uh, to a gaming system. So like yeah. you had the Xbox and then you had the Xbox 360 and then you have the, the one or whatever, whatever those things are. So Xbox one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So they re they release and you're saying, okay, in that era, the challenge with P3 has always been, are you going to, at some point, are you going to have to buy a different, uh, a different pinball machine so you can plug these modules in because we all know technology becomes obsolete eventually. Yeah, they can't. Well, and whether it becomes obsolete because the software can't run it or because you can't get parts anymore. Right. I mean, how much more of these chips and stuff are they going to be able to get a hold of right. for these P3 rocks? When are we going to? I mean, heck, Stern is on. They're releasing Spike 3 here within the next yeah. year. And, so so and that's the wish list of. Uh, so if I'm, if I'm giving a wish list of uh, for P3, is to be able to find ways of updating your system yeah. without having to buy a completely new uh, pinball console for, for lack of a better uh, analogy. However, having, uh, having the Princess Bride as a home run, having it being a family-friendly game, that is not super difficult yeah. just by me looking at it. I haven't played it. But it looks like a family-friendly game it's awesome. You have Colin McAlpine, who is well respected in the pinball community. He is a top player, a, a top uh, professional or a top competitive pinball player is what I he's mean. He's sponsored say. and he's... And he he's is sponsored. I mean, he, he, 
Yeah, exactly. So he's it, just a great dude. Like, he yeah. Really, and, and Colin is, by the way, one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. So having them involved in this is definitely a huge plus and it's a huge step forward. Yep. I, this is the type of thing that would really also work well with something like American pinball. If they were to say, Hey, we're going to do a classic movie that people love. So it was a home run for them to nail this down. I'm glad they have it and it will definitely help move units. Definitely. And the one thing that they really pointed out on the podcast, if you haven't listened to it, go listen to it. Pinball profile again. Uh, but they, they point out, they got all the assets. They were given everything for the mm -hmm. movie. And so it, it's, if you're a fan of princess bride, I think you're going to be very well pleased with what you see. The one thing that stood out to me, um, the animations I felt like were above and beyond what they have been in the past. I feel like it's almost like a, a JJP quality, which I know that like, that's high praise. That's high praise. I felt like they were going for that style, right? Like if you've ever played the Hobbit and it's just the way that the Hobbit's presented on the, on the back glass and stuff like mm -hmm. that, I feel like it was kind of that same concept coming into princess bride. Also, we have speaking of American pinball. Josh Coogler is now doing software on this game. He was with American pinball for Houdini Oktoberfest and hot wheels. Um, I don't know if they ever said why he uh, was, was left, but you know, people change kind of jobs. People change I, jobs all the time. I'm I'm not going to over uh, I'm not going to overanalyze that. Yeah. Uh, um, but it, it, we actually had him on episode 36 mm -hmm. before. I, I still feel bad for American at that point because they released Hot Wheels and then COVID happened. Like it was, yeah, it, it was boom, it was boom, good, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. But no, I'm really excited for, for Jerry and company there at Multimorphic. And this game, like you said, it is, is an evergreen title. And uh, one thing, to, too, is I think it's smart that they have lowered the, pre the entry point if you're buying a cabinet. So typically it was like $13,000 with the module and everything. Uh, with module now for a standard editions 11.4. So it's smart to get people in mm -hmm. and then, you know, if they want to purchase. Because... If it were me, I'd buy Princess Bride and Weird Al, like, right, and just say ship them both together. Yeah, I just, uh, uh, heck, even Final Resistance. I think it's one of those things. Once you get into P three, you'd be very happy and stay there. Mm -hmm. So, I've never personally owned one, so I, I guess I can't say like yay or nay. But I think it's it's still in the, mm, it's a good option for people with limited space. Yes, there are still reasonable doubters out there just because it, and this is one challenge with having um a module is the, or sorry a a, a a a pinball console i'm just going to start calling it that because that's basically what it is you plug in a new game if flow in the cartridge and plug it in <laughs> yeah by the way that didn't work just just in case you're wondering there's actually it says that actually did more damage to the games good. Yeah. um but if one of the, if it goes down, then you're limited because you, if you can have 10 different modules and if your system goes down, then you can't just say, oh, well, okay. Um, my Stern game is down. I'm going to go play my JJP or I'm going to go play a different. Stern. So there are challenges to that. However, it, it's a still a great, it feels like a pinball machine. It really does. Yep. It, it's, it's a different version of a pinball machine, but it is pinball. So it's, if it's something you're interested in, this is a, a stunning title to bring yeah. you into their, into their fold. And I'm jealous for those that are going to be at Texas pinball festival, because this will be there. Right. Jerry said they're going to have rows of them there. Uh, maybe not rows, but they said they're going to have quite a few there. And so uh, it's, it's, I think it's going to be the one that everyone wants to play mm -hmm. at, a, at a festival this year. And so, uh, speaking of festival, uh, which is we're four weeks away. Ooh, mm -hmm. Holy crap. Who else do you think reveals? We, we've already had spooky with Texas pinball or Texas, pinball Texas festival. pinball festival, pinball coming yeah. at you. Texas yeah. pinball Texas, massacre. Yeah. That'd, <laughs> be kind of, that'd be kind of funny, actually. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Stern just did Jaws. Yeah. Uh, here's the reveal from for Multimorphic. Do we see something from JJP? I say no, no, it's, they're still, 
they're still making uh, El- Elton. Elton. Uh, in Elton, it's it is a great game. I it's uh, yeah, it, it that would be a fun game to have, but there's no way they're going to do that right on the heels of Elton John. Yeah. Um, Haggis, I well, we can already talk okay. about them. We can talk about Haggis. Yeah. They released a letter recently stating they're going to have to slow down production mm-hmm. and recapitalize and kind of refocus what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, so I assume they're not going to have anything at Texas Pinball Festival, especially I, since they haven't started producing centaurs yet. Yeah, it's the letter. I, I appreciate that they are being upfront with challenges. That yes. certainly helps out. Um, they have the same problem in a different way that American pinball has. Yeah. They're not making uh, enough. Uh, they're not making enough. And the, the challenge that we have it, with them is they also have the additional challenge of being a foreign company. Yeah. And they're, they are marketing outside of the Mecca of pinball, which is Chicago. Um, they're, they're dealing with all sorts of, uh, manufacturing issues down there. The, they're also their letter while I appreciate them being upfront with it, it tells me that the money is tight yeah, and they cannot leverage buying power to minimize costs. I mean, that's what Stern does. We've talked about this before. If Stern wants to make a thousand games, they order parts for a thousand games. Yeah. If you're making 10 games, you're not going to get the, the volume discount that you get for a thousand games. So yeah. you're going to be having to ask more price, more money for your games. You're competing on the same level, just like the game right behind you. The question in everybody's mind is, does this, uh, does this cost, is it worth a Godzilla premium? And that's kind of my standard analysis on pinball. And there's a lot of games that you're not going to get the same package that you're going to get from a Godzilla premium, but that Godzilla is it's writing on a well-oiled machine that Stern is in being able to manufacture a super high quality game for a lower price. And it's really hard for these smaller companies to compete. Yeah. And this tells me that they're, they are struggling to compete on the same level with that, uh, with that letter. Now it's still good that they're admitting that, Hey, there are some challenges here. I wouldn't say it's a, red flag, but I will say that it's tells me the company is going through some evolution right now. Yeah. And we wish them the best. I know that like there has been some issues, you know, uh, with the fathom runs and whatnot. And I mean, I guess everyone it's hard, right? Because like when someone has a problem, it seems like they go to social media and amplified. And I know like within heating and air conditioning. So I've been doing this for almost 20 years now. Mm -hmm. Um, truly only about 0.07% of the product has an issue with out of, out of the box. Right. But the problem is, is that 0.07 of people might voice their, you know, distaste on, on Google or, and so the problem is it makes the issue look bigger. Um, but, you know, so long as they're taking care of those issues and I, I sure hope they are, mm-hmm. I think you, you give them the benefit of the doubt. I, I, I just listened to Eclectic Gamers podcast with Tony and Dennis, and they they did a really great job on talking about this haggis. So if you haven't listened to it, we do recommend you go there and give them a listen. Um, but they give really in depth about the letter, and I agree with Dennis. The best thing that haggis could do is move production to America. And look yeah. at David Van Ness; he's from New Zealand, right? But mm-hmm. Barrels of Fun is in Houston, yeah. so he understands the you know you've got to have it in a place where you can get product cuz this is mm. where it's built this is where all the all the parts and everything right and so i really think that's the biggest challenge is, is being in australia it's hard to especially where you're if if you are buying product as the money comes in it's hard because it's like well the money came on in so now i can buy the stuff to build it but that could take 2 to 3 months and yada 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 so you're going to have a lag you're going to have a yeah. significant lag and with yeah. pinball mach- you have a steel ball flying around a machine with switches plastic glass screws metal 
something is going to break that yeah. that's physics. So you need to find a way, not necessarily, uh, th there's a reason why you can make video game consoles a, a, across uh, the world and ship them here because for the most part, they're not mechanical. Yeah. But you, you need to have a way of repairing me a mechanical game and the best way to rep repair a mechanical game is to have your manufacturing facilities in the area that most of the players of that game are. Yeah. So, all right. Speaking back to Texas Pinball Festival. So obviously Haggis probably won't have anything there. Is there any other company that we've, that we've missed? I know that like Pinball Ventures did talk about Sorcerer. I highly doubt that'll be down there. Mm -hmm. Ninja Eclipse is probably as far as it's going to get. I highly doubt that Turner Pinball is going to reveal anything. Right. Um, I feel bad. Am I missing anyone? There, there's been the rumor Twilight Zone, yeah. which we don't know if it's CGC or if this is a brand new company. My understanding is it's not CGC making Twilight Zone. Yeah, so I don't which, know who, who that would be. Um, it could be a CGC company. CGC better not be revealing anything at Texas Pinball. Yeah, because CGC <laughs> is, they're definitely still, uh, they're still working on the Pulp Fiction. The yeah, uh, CGC fun, has... So going for it that they they have a quality reputation yes and in fairness i would say they probably have the best quality reputation in the business yep. right now I agree. um the now there is challenging with okay so let's let's go through right stern yeah stern just released uh jaws, jaws it's not going to yes. do anything jjp just did elton john american pinball yes uh, food truck, probably CGC. No, they're still, uh, stuck, uh, stuck in the loop of making Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction yep. So those are the, the four major ones. So let's go to the, the smaller companies. Um, you have spooky with Looney Tunes and, uh, and Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, you have, uh, we talked about, you know, the smaller boutiques, the Turner, uh, Haggis P3 is going to be there with P3. Pencil, right? So I, yeah. I'm sorry if I'm missing anybody. Uh, I I, Labyrinth, Labyrinth was uh, Barrels yeah. of Fun already did Labyrinth, so that's still so not going to be showing anything here because that was just revealed at yeah. At, uh, so Expo. so this Texas is going to be completely different than last year. Yeah, I mean, there's going to be a handful of new games there this year, but yeah, it's it's not going to be the same. It's not going to be the same. Last year was a crazy feeding frenzy of so many games but this one will be a little more reserved yep and speaking of because you know jaws has is out now have you got to play jaws yet i have not because i i went on my i flew out i flew to florida we were gone for a week i didn't fly back till sunday and i've been working non-stop until and today's today's our thursday so yeah. i've been working non-stop and it's about a 40 minute drive for me to go and play jaws um, you did though, you, yes. you were able to go in early before your flight and you were able to play. So talk about it. I totally lucked out. So like our flight was going out Friday morning, our, our airport in my town is having like some revamping stuff and whatnot. So we actually had to fly out of Salt Lake, but I was like, I wonder if Keto's is getting a Jaws cause they're really good to get. They, they, they do that our, our local location, a good friend owns it or at least uh, put, yeah, and puts the pinball machines there. And Mike Iceman, he, mm -hmm. he runs Mike Lund, yeah. Yep, Mike Lund. Uh, so I was like, I wonder if Kitos is going to do it. And and we have a local chat called Slap, Salt Lake mm -hmm. Area Pinballers. And uh, I, I look at it the day before we're supposed Lo to Lo and out. behold. Yep, it says da -na, it showed to Kitos. Da -na, yeah. Yes. So I was like, I, I'm going. <laughs> so uh, we went and it was just me. The nice part is it was a Thursday night, so it wasn't packed at all. I had the game all to myself. I dropped in probably 10 bucks worth. So it was like, you know, 10 games or whatever. And or whatever. Okay. Go on. <laughs> I, I, I want to point out if you haven't listened to triple drain, you should mm -hmm. listen to their episode. I, after listening to it, I feel like Travis hit the ball or the nail on the head. This game is like traditional pinball. Like nothing feels safe. And even the shots that are safe, comes screaming back at you so fast it's like what just happened mm -hmm. and so i i've really enjoyed the game it, it is hard uh, it is it's one of those games i'm like i can't wait to get at home 
so I can breathe a little bit and like kind of slow down and be like, what is going on here? Because the it it's kind of overwhelming. You know how Owens are. Like you, your first twenty games on it, you're just trying to get your bearings. Of like, right? Okay, what does this do? What does that do? Um, the shots really great. The the harpoon shot, if I remember if that's correctly. So if you're looking at the play field on the left side, uh, there's a shot that goes up around. It. It's like kind of like an orbit, uh, okay. and it comes back right back to your flipper real quick. But in, about midway down, try above where the stand up targets are or the or the drops, depending on what version you're playing. There's just a little gate that you can hit it through. Mm-hmm. And that shot is so satisfying to hit. And but it, it it's almost it's maybe not as narrow as the Jurassic Park shot. Um, but because of the weird angle, you're shooting pretty much straight across that play field. And it just it's so good. I love the <sighs> The thing I was thinking when I, before I was going to play this is you see the the captive ball of the mill, right? You see you, the Bruce is okay. Bruce is sitting on top of it, mm-hmm. or he's sitting underneath the boat, right? And I'm like, this shot's going to be so easy, just a repeatable hit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm like, it's going to be kind of just another bash toy. What shocked me is playing the game. I felt like it wasn't as easy to dial in. Like it's mm. it's the shot's a little smaller than I assumed. I thought it would be more of like a attack from Mars, where I feel like attack from Mars, you're you aim for the center, you're hitting the center where I feel like you kind of had to, because it's a captive ball you're hitting. That's not really in the same spot every time. Yeah. It's, it's almost a kinetically moving captive yes. ball. Yep. So it's, it, it does add that variability. So overall love the game. I'm not going to give it like an official grade yet because like 10 games, I feel like I still first impression, that. first impressions, fresh and imper- first impressions. Um, if you're expecting this to be like Godzilla, I would tamp your expectations. I feel like Godzilla is a little easier to play. Sure. Uh, a little more forgiving. I feel like Jaws is not. I feel like Jaws is probably in the same realm as Iron Maiden. Okay. Um, where, because I feel like Iron Maiden, all the shots on Iron Maiden are kind of dangerous, right? Yeah, there are some easy shots in Iron Maiden where you're like shooting up to the Pharaoh's tomb. You know, so Eddie, that that's that, and that's the straight up the middle shot. The the question I have is on, and we've talked about this before, Elwin has that mixture, that secret sauce of being able to have some easy shots, some hard shots, and definitely giving priority scoring to the harder shots. Are there also easy shots in this game or do they feel all difficult? So there's easy shots. So one of the easier shots is there's a ramp. There's like a 180 ramp right up the middle. Okay. But the thing is, it's easy to hit, but it's a straight shot back to your flipper. Like it comes back at you pretty quick. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I said, that the the orbit on the left, I, I don't know if that's what you're going to call it. It's, it's a fairly easy shot to hit as well. But it's also one of those things too, where if you hit it clean, it's coming back to the flipper really quick. Mm-hmm. Uh, one thing that Travis Murray did point out, you're going to have to get used to holding up a flipper and just ski jumping the ball to get right. it under control. So, so it's, it's a kinetic pass is what yes. you're doing. Yeah. It's, it's coming the through the in lane and jumping over to the other one. So you're catching right. it on the opposing flipper. You're going to have to learn how to do that because this game mm-hmm. is so fast. It's, it's just, there it is the one thing, the other thing that shocked me too. So you, you know, the fishing reel that's like mm-hmm. right to the right mm-hmm. of the captive ball. Mm-hmm. Um, if you do not hit that clean, it kind of dribbles it back out to the center of the drain. And Mm -hmm. so that's one thing too, like you're going to have to, which is funny because it's in the right third of the game. Like it's not, I, if you're looking at the play field, the shark is in the center of third, the shark is all is kind of on the right of the center third. And then there's the, you know, then there's the chum bucket and right between that is a shot. So that's yeah. Well, actually I'm sorry. That is the shot. So you basically have two shots up the middle. You have the kinetic ball and you have the chum bucket. So I felt like if you hit the left side of the reel and it didn't go in through clean and it dribbled mm-hmm. back out, it still came towards a flipper. But if you hit the right side mm-hmm. of the reel and it comes back at you, right. it, it, it dribbles it right down yeah. the center drain. Actually, and sorry. Be- I, I, I did mis- misspeak. It's North Beach. That's the shot that's in the center third. Yes. The, yeah. the chum bucket is in the left one third. Yes. And so it's one of those, it's also could be the way that the game was set up on location. Dan and Mike are usually pretty good to set these games up so they're fair, but yet hard. So right. that way, because they do a lot of competition there. So mm-hmm. um, seriously, this game is awesome. I like that 
uh, Quint Shack, when you start those, it's you're you're hunting sharks. Mm-hmm. These are modes that play as you're playing the game. So like, so many pop bumper hits, so many spinner spins, okay. and so it's nice to get one of those started and then keep playing the game. I like that. I like that concept of there's something running in the background that's still awarding me for stuff I'm already doing. So okay. Overall, fantastic. Can't wait for mine to show up. Uh, I think the... Are you getting the pro or the premium? Premium, 100%. Uh, Other thing, too, I have heard this complaint. Um, Where the the shark fin is. Um, Okay. I think you can re-level that area. So I didn't notice it, but there have been people who have been complaining that these have been put on location. They haven't been re-leveled or whatever. And the ball kind of redirects because it's a divot there. Mm. And so if, if it's not set up just right i think people get frustrated at the fact it's like i just shot that straight and it should have hit that shot clean but it kind of ricocheted off the divot of the the shark fin yeah uh, area so that's one thing to look at just just adjust that and i think you'll be happy okay yeah it'll be it'll be interesting because this is going to be one of those that has uh this is the first element as we mentioned before that actually has an identifiable upper play field yep so it is going to play differently between the pro and the premium. Yep. So and, I, and if, if you notice on that premium, that play field, it's shots. It's like you're up there for a split second. It's it is. I you like can't it. stay up there. You no. can't stay. Yeah. You can't hang out up there. And I, I feel like it adds to the gameplay instead of, of uh, slowing down the gameplay. So yeah. in fairness, I think it's, it, it's appropriate that, there is a little bit of danger associated with the theme. Yep. Like 100%. there's, you know, in, in Godzilla, it seems that, yeah, there's danger, but it all, almost feels like there, the danger is slowly coming upon you. Yeah. You you're know? playing as Godzilla. I mean, you're, you're destroying right. cities. Like you are the beast, right? You are the beast. Yes. And so that's why it's a little easier because to stomp Tokyo is not as hard for Godzilla as it would be for Bruce. I guess. I right. Mean, that's probably true. Hey, I would love to see Bruce stomp Tokyo though. I would as well. Mm-hmm. A lot of Kaiju and whatnot going on. There. Mm-hmm. That should be Jaws five. That, that's originally what Jaws 19 was supposed to be in back to the future. Exactly. So the 3d met- Jaws. Yeah, man, that's why he came out of the theater the way it mm. was, because it was going to be kaiju, and he was going to be a giant kaiju that just destroyed yeah. everything. Yep. We, nice. we, we figured out the plot. We're, we're, done. we're good. Done. <laughs> Any, anything else we want to discuss, Scott, before we get... Um, no, I, I'm, I'm sad that I'm not going to Texas this year. This is yeah. sadly the second year in a row that I will miss it. I, I went two years ago. Um, because I have a prior commitment, uh, I have a friend who invited me to a tennis tournament. So I'm going to go to yeah. that. Nice. Um, but I am, I'm still planning on going to expo and yes. I'm, I'm anticipating that's, this is one, if there's a positive, uh, way I can view Texas pinball festival is that there will be less reveals at this Texas than there were last year. I felt really left out last year. Yeah. However, I'm anticipating there will be a lot more to see at expo this year and so i'm really excited to see that so it, my consolation prize is unfortunately i can't go to texas but i will be going to expo if you haven't gotten your hotel room yet for expo you might want to because this is the 40th anniversary it's going to be huge they've added an extra day yeah doubled the size the yeah it's you know i'm excited to rob burke has been talking about this during expo 39 and so I, he's he's told me some of the concepts are coming up with. If you've been wanting to go to Expo, this is the year. I find it funny, uh, not not to pick on Dennis, but you know Dennis has has made it very clear that he's like, mm-hmm. don't waste your time. We're going to Expo. We're gonna kidnap Dennis this year, <laughs> and Tony, you and I are going to go to Dennis's house, ring the doorbell, and capture him like they did on Nightmare Before Christmas. They capture yeah. Santa and just put him in a bag, and we're going to take him to Expo. I th- I think the problem is is. When we went to Expo the year that that Eclectic Gamers went with mm-hmm. us, it was right after COVID. It was shaky as is. No one knew exactly what was going to be happening. And so I think it has just gotten better and better every right. year. Like I was very happy with Expo last year. I felt like mm-hmm. it was it was awesome. And so it was good. I can't wait to – maybe they'll take my concept. I was pitching an idea to Rob because – uh, he, he's, he's taking in ideas right now. Like they're, they're still, they want to do some, something unique. Mm-hmm. And do you ever remember seeing, maybe this is more your generation, maybe, maybe not, 
but where they parked the car in the middle of the mall and everyone had to put their hand on the car, you know? Oh, geez. I, and, yeah. And the last person with their hand off got the car or the last person with their hand on it. Yeah. You get like a 30 minute bathroom break or whatever. Yeah. But do that with a pinball machine. How many people would show up and do that starting <laughs> night one? Oh my gosh. Yeah. That, that, okay. Pinball events are stinky enough. We don't need to have some unshowered people there who are there for 72 hours trying to win a Godzilla premium or a Jaws pro or something like that. <laughs> There's like 50 people have signed yeah, up. Uh, You've got 50 people just mm, squished in trying yeah, to mm. keep their hand on a Jaws. We know if it was a Venom, there'd only be like five people. <laughs> oh, wow. That's not, that's not fair. It's not fair. I'm sorry. I, I, it was an easy jab. I apologize. Mm -hmm. You know, Brian, Eddie, you're awesome. I actually enjoy Venom. I wouldn't mm -hmm. own it, but I did. I, when I played it, it was a good game. I'm any. <laughs> it all depends what game you're you're giving away <laughs> that's right that's right and yeah actually they're just gonna they're gonna d uh, blow off one of those uh wwe uh you know those gold the, with the gold trend that they were yeah. giving out forever because no one bought it i felt so bad so i there's a guy in my there's not very much pinball in my area so when i find someone that owns pinball sure. like, whoa like hey what you want? there's one person here in town the only game they own is wwe yeah <laughs> oh like, yeah i asked him like what's what's wrong with the site the the decal has been yeah. peeling off for years now yeah. and i'm just like first off it's a wwe and then it looks like it's like crap it's an le and it's falling apart I'm like oh that just that sucks so bad for you like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness well this was awesome scott it's great to have you have you yeah. on the mic no, it's, it's good to be back and good to be back in town for a while. And I am looking forward to, well, I, I'm really looking forward to seeing what is revealed from Texas. So I hope that there are a few people who are going that know us and they can actually give us, uh, I can live vicariously through you. So I'd appreciate that. Yep. Uh, once again, thanks for those that reached out uh, and shared their comments with the last episode. We hope that you did enjoy it. Uh, there was a lot of a lot of love around the episode. Um, if you want to get a hold of us, we are Loser Kid Pinball Podcast at gmail.com. We have a YouTube. Did you know that? I do know that. We're on it right now. <laughs> YouTube.com slash at Loser Kid Pinball. It's where you do have to put the at sign in there. It's kind of weird. Anywho, if you want to get a hold of us, uh, Facebook, X, Instagram, it's all at Loser Kid Pinball. Uh, hit us up. We, we respond best on Facebook and whatnot. Uh, but like I said, if you have any questions or you have some really crazy ideas that, that we should be pitching at Expo, uh, send them in via loserkidpinballpodcast at gmail.com. Maybe we'll read them out. Maybe some really wild ones, right? Like, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even. Uh, this is family friendly. Show. It's family go. friendly. We have to keep it clean. All right, Scott, give us the last word. Okay. You know what? Go out. I, I want I want you your homework assignment is to go to Texas Pinball Festival and let us know what you're looking forward to. Yes.